So let's say for a moment that I have a grid of values and like this purple value, this purple grid here, and it's a series of rectangular prisms. They don't necessarily have to be cubes. Like in this particular case, delta y, delta x, and delta z are actually different lengths and heights, but they are rectangular prisms. If I have some sort of rectangular prism set up here, what I can do is if I have some sort of solid object, you know, it might be a sphere, it, you know, it might be a cube, it might be some generic object though. You know, it has, has some sort of depth to it. Then what I can do is I can take grids across it, you know, just kind of draw lines and draw lines and draw lines and I can grid it up. And I might overcover it a little bit or I might undercover it when I draw those grids because the I'm dealing in, in rectangular looking things, but you know, the edges might be smooth or whatever. So what we can say is we can say each one of these little pieces, you now if these have little eyes on them, then we can get the volume by multiplying length times width times height the way that we would normally expect. So we can say each one of these little pieces has its own volume. And now technically we can even define these pieces to be different sizes and different locations, but for our purposes, let's not, let's not get that particular with it. So what I can say is, okay, I've got some sort of blue object and I'm trying to get its volume, but I can approximate it with these little cubes. So I can say, all right, these little, these little cube vol, or not cubes, but rectangular prism volumes, I can take those and I can say, well, the volume is roughly the sum of those. And, you know, I can get better if I, if I draw a more fine grid, I can make sure there's less overcover or less undercover. And, you know, I can keep going and keep going and keep going. And what we find is instead of, and once we sum up all those cubes, if we do that, we do that, you know, infinitesimally, right? We, we get them very, very small. We develop this concept of a triple integral. And what that's simply saying is we take the value or the sum of the volume of each of those cubes. What we do is we recover the volume of the object. And this idea is especially helpful when you start thinking about the, you know, the complex shapes that get produced. How do we find volume for shapes that aren't elementary geometric objects? You know, whether it's an ellipsoid or, um, you know, we know, we, we know how to find something for like an ellipsoid or a sphere or a cube, but how do we find it for these arbitrary shapes and think like in production when someone's actually producing a product to, to go and sell, how do I know how much material to have, how much volume do I need? And what we can do is we can find ways to construct functions that allow us to, to determine the volume of this. And so triple integrals are really just they're similar to the way double integrals work, except instead of working over some sort of 2D region, they work over this solid 3D region. And you know, what you'll find is there's actually arbitrarily large integrals, but we're only gonna deal with triple up to triple integrals in this particular course.